Good morning, students. Our topic for today is about decalcification. To study histopathology, the tissue specimen should be appropriately prepared for microscopic examination, thin enough to permit the passage of light, and should be one cell thickness for detailed morphology. How about hard mineralized tissue? How do we cut and section it for histopathologic study? To section the hard mineralized tissue, the calcification should be done so that the mineralized tissue become compatible for sectioning and subsequent staining. So what is the calcification then? The calcification is the removal of calcium ions from a bone or calcified tissue through a histological process that makes the bone or any calcified tissue flexible and easier to cut. Tissues that require decalcification include primarily the bone and other specimens like teeth, calcified tumors, or calcified heart valves. This is the step-by-step -step process of conventional tissue processing. And take note that decalcification is an optional step that follows after fixation. Decalcification enables the histotechnologies to cut soft tissues of the bone using the microtome so that they can be processed like any other soft tissue of the body. And decalcification is quite a lengthy procedure since bone pieces need to be left in the decalcifying agent for several days or even weeks depending on the size of the tissue. So the principle behind decalcification is quite simple. You just need to remove the substance that makes the bone hard. So you remove the calcium from the bone. How to do that? A strong mineral acid and weak organic acid form soluble calcium salts in an ion exchange that moves calcium from the bone into the decalcifying solution or chelating agents that is used to sequester or take up metallic calcium ions in aqueous solution. There are actually criteria of a good decalcifying agent, namely complete removal of calcium, absence of damage to tissue cells or fibers, non-impairment of subsequent staining technique, and reasonable speed of decalcification. There are also factors that influence the rate of decalcification which include concentration, fluid access, size and consistency, agitation, and temperature. So let us discuss these factors one by one. First is concentration. In general, more concentrated acid solutions decalcify bone more rapidly but are more harmful to the tissue. High concentrations and greater amount of fluid will increase the speed of the process of decalcification. Rapid depletion of an acid or chelator by the reaction with calcium can be avoided by using large volumes of fluid compared with the volume of tissue and by changing the solution several times during the decalcification process. The recommended ratio of fluid to tissue volume for decalcification is actually 20 is to 1. Next factor is fluid access. What does it mean? The calcifying agent should have ready access to all surfaces of the specimen which will enhance diffusion and penetration into the specimen, facilitating solution, ionization, and of course removal of calcium. The selected pieces of tissues are usually placed in a gauze bag and suspended in liberal amount of the calcifying solution by means of a thread to ensure complete decalcification and protect the tissue from any precipitate that may be settled at the bottom of the container. And for the size and consistency, the generality is the bigger the size of the tissue, the longer the periods for complete decalcification. And the more increase in consistency of tissue, the longer the periods for complete decalcification. And for agitation, Gentle agitation by low-speed rotation, rocking, stirring, or bubbling air into the solution may increase the rate of decalcification. And lastly, temperature. 
Increased temperature will hasten the calcification, but it will also increase the damaging effects of acids on tissue. And the optimum temperature for the calcification is 18 to 30 degrees centigrade. And now let us discuss the general technique of decalcification. So there are five techniques that needs to be followed in decalcification. First is selection of tissue, followed by fixation, then decalcification, followed by acid neutralization, and lastly, thorough washing. So let us discuss this one by one. Let us discuss the first step, which is selection of the tissue. For large specimen, fine-toothed bone saw or hack saw should be used, while for small specimen, geological cutting machine fitted with a diamond impregnated cutting disc is used and the target specimen thickness is 2 to 3 millimeters. After selection of tissue, the next step is fixation. So this is the second step. In fixation, we need to make sure that the tissue has been adequately fixed and rinsed well prior to decalcification. Tissue damage during acid decalcification is four times greater when the tissue is unfixed. So in order to protect the cellular and fibrous elements of bone from damage caused by the acids used as decalcifying agents, it is particularly important to thoroughly fix these specimens prior to decalcification and poorly fixed specimens become macerated during the calcification and they also stain poorly. So what are the fixatives recommended if there is a plan for the calcification? So buffered formalin is a satisfactory fixative for bone, but where the preservation of bone marrow is important, some laboratories use alternatives such as zinc formalin mixtures, B5 formal acetic alcohol or the Davidson's fixative or Bowen's solution. For tooth specimens, better choice of fixative is 15% formic acid. And if there is a plan for electron microscopy, then glutaraldehyde is the best choice. The next step after adequate fixation is the calcification proper. There are three main types of decalcifying agents, those based on strong mineral acids, those based on weaker organic acids, and those composed of chelating agents. So let us discuss this one by one. Let us begin with acid decalcifying agents. Acid decalcifying agents are the most widely used agents for routine decalcification of large amounts of bony tissues because they are stable, readily available, and relatively inexpensive as compared to other decalcifying agents. Acid decalcifying agents are either strong mineral acids such as nitric acid and hydrochloric acid or weak organic acids such as formic acid, trichloroacetic acid, chromic acid, and citric acid citrate buffer solution. As soon as fixation is complete, the selected pieces of tissues are usually placed in a gauze bag and suspended in liberal amounts of decalcifying solution by means of a thread to ensure complete decalcification and to protect the tissue from any precipitate that might be settled at the bottom of the container. The thread used in this method should be dipped in melted paraffin wax to avoid destruction of the thread by the corrosive activity of the acid. Strong acids such as hydrochloric acid with recommended concentration of 5 to 10 percent are the most rapid in action but if used longer than necessary, strong acids can macerate tissues and strong acids can rapidly cause a loss of nuclear staining because of failure of the nuclear chromatin to take up hematoxylin and other basic dyes. Staining by acid dyes like eosin will be less affected. So the first strong acid is nitric acid which is the most common and fastest decalcifying agent used so far. 
producing minimal distortion of tissues, so it is recommended for routine purposes. It, however, inhibits nuclear stains and destroys the tissues if used at concentrated solution. So this may be prevented by combining nitric acid with formaldehyde or alcohol. Examples of nitric acid decalcifying agents are aqueous nitric acid solution 10%, formal nitric acid, perineous fluid, and fluoroglucin nitric acid. So aqueous nitric acid solution 10% has a decalcification time of 12 to 24 hours with the following advantages. So advantages include rapid inaction, easily removed by 70% alcohol, recommended for urgent biopsy and for needle and small biopsy specimens to permit rapid diagnosis within 24 hours or less, and the other advantages are as follows. On the other hand, these advantages include it imparts a yellow color with nitrous acid, thereby impairing the staining reaction of the tissue. Strong acids tend to be more damaging to the tissue antigens for immunohistochemical staining and enzymes may be totally lost. And other disadvantages are the following. Next is formal nitric acid which has a decalcification time of 1 to 3 days with the following advantages. It include it produces less tissue destruction than 10% aqueous nitric acid and the other advantages are as follows. On the other hand, these advantages include yellow color imparted by nitrous acid formation which will impair staining reaction of the cell prevented by neutralizing the tissue with 5% sodium sulfate and washing in running tap water for at least 12 hours and addition of 0.1% urea to pure concentrated nitric acid will also make discoloration disappear. And the solution should be used inside a fume hood. So take note of that. Next is perineous fluid which has a decalcification time of 2 to 7 days. For the advantages, it is both decalcifying agent and softener agent. Maceration is avoided due to the presence of chromic acid and alcohol. And the other advantages are the following. However, complete decalcification cannot be determined by chemical testing. Next is fluoroglucine nitric acid which has a decalcification time of 12 to 24 hours with the following advantages and the following disadvantages. When decalcification is complete, the acid must be removed by three changes of 70 to 90% ethanol to completely remove the decalcifying agent and thus preventing reaction to chemical use in the succeeding histopathologic processes. Next, strong acid is hydrochloric acid which is inferior compared to nitric acid in its role as a decalcifying agent because of its slower action and greater distortion of tissue produced on the decalcified section. Nevertheless, hydrochloric acid produces good nuclear staining. There are also proprietary or commercially available decalcifying solutions sold in the market. Manufacturers generally make the components secret. Nevertheless, rapid proprietary solutions contain hydrochloric acid while slow proprietary mixtures contain buffered formic acid or formalin formic acid. Example of acid decalcifying agent that contains hydrochloric acid is Von Ebner's fluid. So Von Ebner's fluid has the following advantages like not requiring washing out before dehydration and it is recommended decalcifying agent for teeth and small pieces of bone. The other advantages on, of Von Ebner's fluid are the following. However, the extent of Von Ebner's fluid decalcification cannot be measured by chemical testing. So next type of decalcifying agent is weak organic acids which are better suited to bone marrow since they are not 
as harsh. However, they act more slowly on dense cortical bone. So the first weak acid used for decalcification is formic acid which is a moderate acting decalcifying agent which produces better nuclear staining with less tissue distortion and is safer to handle than nitric acid or hydrochloric acid. Formic acid in a 10% concentration is the best all-around decalcifying agent and also Formic acid is the only weak acid used extensively as a primary decalcifying agent. We know that formic acid is a moderate acting decalcifier, but the addition of citrate accelerates decalcification by chelating the calcium as it is liberated from the bone. So what are the preparations of formic acid as a decalcifying agent? First is 10% formic acid which has a decalcification time of 2 to 7 days with the following advantages. It may be used both as a fixative and decalcifying agent. It's also suitable for most routine surgical specimens particularly when immunohistochemical staining is needed and the other advantages include the following. On the other hand, these advantages include relatively slow hence not suitable for urgent specimens and it requires neutralization with 5% sodium sulfate and washing out to remove acid from the tissue. Next formic acid preparation is formic acid sodium citrate solution which has a decalcification time of 3 to 14 days with the following advantages and disadvantages. Next weak acid is trichloroacetic acid with a decalcification time of 4 to 8 days. Its advantages include it permits good nuclear staining and it does not require washing out. The excess acid may be removed by several changes of 90% alcohol thus improving tissue dehydration. Its disadvantages on the other hand include the following. Next weak acid is chromic acid or Fleming's fluid. It has advantages like it may be used both as a fixative and decalcifying agent. Its disadvantages include the following. Chromic acid is an environmental toxin. Nuclear staining with hematoxylin is inhibited. It forms precipitate at the bottom of the container thus requiring frequent changes of solution and other disadvantages are the following. Next weak acid is citric acid citrate buffer solution with the decalcification time of 6 days. It has the following advantages and it has this disadvantage. And the last type of decalcifying agent are the chelating agents. Chelating agents are substances which combine with calcium ions and other salts like iron and magnesium deposits to form weakly dissociated complexes and facilitate removal of calcium salt like the EDTA or the ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. It works by capturing the calcium ions from the surface of the apatite crystal, slowly reducing its size. If preservation of nuclear DNA is important or if histochemical methods for nucleic acids or enzyme activities are intended, a chelating agent is preferred to an acid. The rate at which EDTA will decalcify is actually pH dependent. It is generally used at pH 7 which has excellent results and it works more rapidly at pH of 10 but some tissue elements can be damaged at alkaline pH. The tissue is usually placed in EDTA from 1 to 3 weeks for small specimens but it may take 6 to 8 weeks or longer to totally decalcify dense cortical bone. And the solution should be changed every three days. 
So one type of EDTA is neutral EDTA which has advantages including the following. And these advantages including an activation of alkaline phosphatase activity of the tissue which can be restored by addition of magnesium chloride. Other disadvantages are the following. So we are done with the individual decalcifying agents. Now let us discuss on how to check endpoint of decalcification. There are various methods to determine endpoint decalcification, namely physical test, chemical test, bubble test, or radiography. So for physical test, it requires manipulation, bending, probing, or trimming of the specimen to fill for the remaining calcified areas. So next is chemical test, also known as calcium oxalate test. So we already know that in decalcification, the decalcifying fluid is usually changed every 24 to 48 hours. So in chemical testing, 5 ml of discarded decalcified fluid is neutralized with 0.5 normal sodium hydroxide. 1 ml of 5 gram per deciliter ammonium oxalate is also added and allowed to stand for 30 minutes. So appearance of turbidity or cloudiness indicates the presence of calcium. And if the solution remains clear after 30 minutes, it means that the decalcification process is already complete. So this test is not done if EDTA is used as decalcifying agent. So again, in chemical tests, if there is turbidity or cloudiness, there is still presence of calcium, so decalcification is not yet done. But if it's already clear, so decalcification is already complete. So another test is bubble test, where acid reacts with calcium carbonate in bone to produce carbon dioxide, which is seen as layer of bubbles on the bone surface. However, the bubble test is subjective and unreliable, and the presence of tiny bubbles indicate less calcium present. And lastly, the last method that may be used to check endpoint of decalcification is radiography or x-ray, which is best for large specimens. So after decalcification, the fourth step is acid neutralization. So the chemical used in decalcification should be neutralized in order to prevent reaction of the chemical to succeeding histopathologic processes. So we need to do acid neutralization. So chemical neutralization is accomplished by immersing for several hours decalcified bone into either saturated lithium carbonate solution or 5 to 10 percent aqueous sodium bicarbonate solution. And the last step is thorough washing. So residual acid decalcifier should be neutralized before proceeding to the next processes. Many laboratories recommend rinsing the specimens in tap water for 30 minutes for small specimen or 1 to 4 hours for larger specimen. Some recommend immersion of decalcified bone in either saturated lithium carbonate solution or 5 to 10 percent aqueous sodium bicarbonate solution for several hours. So there are also other techniques of decalcification aside from the acid decalcification and use of chelating agents. So what are the other techniques of decalcification? So first is ion exchange resin. So it is used for removal of calcium ions from formic acid containing decalcifying fluid thereby ensuring a rapid rate of solubility of the calcium from the tissue. So there is reduction in the time of decalcification. So what is the procedure in doing the ion exchange resin? 
First is the tissue is placed in a bottle in a mixture of 10% or 20% resin and formic acid. Then, resin used is ammonium form for sulfonated polyesterine resin. And the volume of fluid is 20 to 30 times that of the specimen. After use, resin may be regenerated by washing twice with dilute 10 normal hydrochloric acid followed by 3 washes in distilled water. Another technique is electrophoretic decalcification where positively charged calcium ions are attracted to a negative electrode and subsequently removed from the decalcifying solution. So the time required for decalcification is thereby shortened due to the heat and electrolytic reaction. And lastly, microwave oven decalcification where hard tissues are placed in the decalcifying agent in a microwave oven for intermittent periods with regular changes of the solution until the end point is reached. The temperature restriction is between 42 to 45 degrees Celsius for best results and microwave irradiation has been shown to speed up the process of decalcification significantly from days to just hours. And there are also other concepts that we need to discuss. First is surface decalcification. So when the paraffin embedded block has been trimmed, the tissue surface may reveal small foci of calcification and may cause resistance or a grating sensation when sectioned with a microtome knife. So if this is encountered, the block can be removed from the chalk and placed face down on a pad of cotton or gauze saturated with 10% hydrochloric acid for approximately one hour. This surface treatment will allow the decalcifier to penetrate a small distance into the block and dissolve the calcium. The block can then be thoroughly rinsed in water to remove residual acid, chilled, and sectioned. Next is tissue softener. So unduly hard tissues which are liable to damage the microtome knives may require tissue softeners aside from decalcification. Perineous fluid may act both as a decalcifying agent and tissue softener. So you immerse the hard tissue to perineous fluid for 12 to 24 hours to soften the tissue. And in the event that you under decalcify the tissue, the effects are inability to section, because it is still hard, incomplete infiltration of paraffin, presence of bone dust as shown in the picture on the right, and to remedy under decalcification, you may perform surface decalcification or even do re-decalcification. On the other hand, if you do over decalcification, you expect Nuclear details that are lost or severely compromised, disruption of cell membrane and cytologic properties, loss of glycogen, and swelling of tissue, especially the collagen. And that's the end of our lecture.